Hey friends, welcome back to Vince and Gigi's Super Channel G. I'm going through my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection and specifically trying to see who I have from the 2012 version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I'm putting everything in a separate box because here's Rise and then I definitely have my original Turtles as well. But go through this with me so we can see who we're missing to complete this set and then you know what, we just might unbox them all afterwards but we definitely want to see who we have so that we can get this complete set now that I know that there's tons out there and there's some rare figures and there's some you know special ones but I definitely want at least one of each figure so what do you say we take a look to see who I have and we'll also take a look at you know some of the other stuff that we have that is turtles from this time frame but um, I'm so excited I bet you are too so Let's go ahead and dive on in. But guys, if you've not already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe below. Hit the notification bell next to it so you get notified every time we have a new video come up. Talk to us in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know where in the world you're watching from. Give us a big thumbs up. And what do you say we go ahead and get started? Right now. What is up, Vincent and Gigi? Vincent and Gigi, Super Channel G. Super Channel G. Gigi. Vincent Gigi from Super Channel G. Super Channel G. Vincent Gigi on Super Channel G. So tight. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Congratulations on all your success. Congratulations on everything. I will see you on the TV. On Super Is this great? All right, friends, welcome back to Vincent Gigi's Super Channel G. And I figured we'd get started with all of the action figures we have so far that are still in the original purple boxes before they shifted over into the green and yellow ones. If you don't know what I mean, let me show you real quick. Give me a second, and I'll bring one on over, and then we'll get started. And this is what I mean. These were the yellow and green boxes that came afterwards when these were around like 20, 2012, 2013, 2014, maybe even into 2015. But notice how it's the exact same action figure with sometimes slightly different paint. Um, rarely any other differences, but um, we'll go over that too. So these are the ones that we're going to do after we go ahead and look at all the ones we have that are still in these purple boxes. So as I mentioned before, these were for the first couple years. And let's see exactly who we have here so we can move on and maybe you can count with me how many total turtle action figures we actually get to see here so that uh, we can see how many we're missing, as I mentioned before. And ooh, my cat is leaning a little bit. Sorry about that. And, and unbox them one by one. What do you say? So let's first catalog who we actually have and you know what let me bring this down further so we can see let's get started with this master splinter and look how gorgeous this looks of course um, I don't need to tell you that Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, the 2012 series with these guys right here was my favorite out of all of them even though I grew up watching the original 1987 Ninja Turtles this iteration of all of them was my favorite and that's why I have uh, what is hopefully going to be one day the um, complete set. But let's start diving into the characters and we have Splinter of course here, Honorable Sensei of the Ninja Turtles and look how beautiful this package looks. Obviously this is going to be almost the exact same package on all of them. Just again slight little variations like sometimes it'll say ages 4 and up here, sometimes it'll say it up here. But um, anyway, look at this splinter right here. It's absolutely awesome. And as we look at who's in this collection, to kick off the Ninja Turtles, of course, it was all four. And if you remember in the show, they had uh, their pads and their and the way they were wrapped was in shades of brown and and uh, you know light like that. It was not colored with with their colors other than they had these masks across their face they had no other hints of color on the original ones now in these very first uh, releases they had these early turtle feet 
that later looked very different and uh, we'll take a look at that later but um just to know that which turtle set you have these were the early ones where it had that that style of foot and toe but um look at that we're gonna see how many of these we actually have as we go through the set and um, they all have this really awesome write-up right here but then specifically you could cut out this card see where it says clip and collect one for all of these action figures but um it has a cool little write-up and an awesome picture like for example right here and they'd be the same size and shape but um they all had this right here that i'm going to read and the top where it says nickelodeon teenage mutant ninja turtles mutated from ooze and raised in the ways of new ninjutsu by their rat sensei splinter the teenage mutant ninja turtles are ready to venture outside their sewer lair to fight evil everywhere okay so this first one is splinter honorable sensei of the ninja turtles protective and precise Splinter is an unmatched ninja master with a playful and deep spirit that probably comes in handy raising his mutant sons, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo. Once a human known as Hamato Yoshi, Splinter continues his tradition of teaching ninjutsu and fighting the evil Foot Clan. Very cool, and it even tells you about the weapons and the team, so on and so forth. And of course, he's his hands, feet, tail, walking staff, anything and everything, and Team Ninja Turtles. Very cool. All right, so let's move on. Let me set them aside. Make sure I don't drop them over here and clear our space. So next, we have Shredder, deadly evil of the... <laughs> deadly leader of the evil Foot Clan. Again, beautiful package. Look at the building back there and the water tower. It looks awesome and yeah there's more than one shredder they released but um let's take a look and then this one let's see on the bottom does say 2012 over here so these are from the original release and let's take a look at the back well let's let's let me take a closer look at him because there we have another shredder where you can remove his uh, helmet right very cool And let's take a look at what it says over here. Shredder, deadly leader of the evil Foot Clan. Cold, cunning, and cruel, Shredder is the turtle's hateful arch enemy, willing to go to any length to destroy them and the rat sensei Splinter. With the Foot Clan and his shredding armor, there is little the Shredder can't do. Turtles beware. His weapons with forbidden ninja techniques and razor sharp armor. Team Foot Clan. And the Kuro Kabuto. And look how great that looks. Of course, I'm not going to be clipping these out, but you do have that option right there. So we got a couple of foot soldiers. These are awesome. Again, these are from 2012, right as the show was coming out, and includes Ninja Arsenal. You know what? Uh, real quick. I didn't even highlight that. For Splinter, sorry before I go too much further, he's got his walking staff right here. And it is uh, at least translucent, so you can kind of see through it when light is hitting it. Uh, for Shredder, sorry I went a little too far, he's got this awesome katana right here. And then these throwing stars. So that's cool. So if there's anything else that was in there. For our foot soldiers, the evil ninjas loyal to the shredder we have a black katana here and looks like uh, this smaller blade here and they should be able to fit in there and I'm assuming that would be able to fit in his back and there's the throwing stars but I'm like hmm is this uh, is this supposed to be a robot ninja interesting right from the foot clan so Let's see what it says right here. It says, Foot Soldier, evil ninjas loyal to the Shredder, obedient, silent, and lethal. The soldiers of the evil Foot Clan exist for only one purpose. I said that backwards. For one purpose only. To serve their leader, the villainous Shredder. Armed with the best stolen weapons and gear, everyone but the turtles cower in fear at the sight of their bug-like eyes and red bandanas. 
So yep, that's awesome. So no, this would be the early versions where they they were still ninjas, and then later on, they got robot versions from the Krang. And man, that looks awesome. So we will keep moving on. And I did have two, which is awesome because you can't just have one foot soldier. All right, let's see what we got next. We have, here's Krang, or one of the Krang. And it was very different from what I had been used to as far as like from the 1987 um, version because it was only one, really. And from Dimension X and I'll get him redder. And we kind of just talked like that. And, uh, <laughs> and he eventually made, you know, a couple of appearances in uh, um, this version of the Ninja Turtles, but they're extra dimensional enemies of Earth. And man, this one, was hard to find and again I'm glad we we're able to get two but I had to pay a premium price to get him uh, delivered um, through mail order and I, pff, I don't remember how much I paid but it was probably at least $35 to get I think I paid 20 for this one and 35 for this one but um, that's because um, they're not new anymore otherwise it would have been probably about $8 roughly depending on when you bought it you know maybe 10 and uh, yeah I love how you can remove that Krang brain in there and how he's like, look at this, his little tentacles move. So and he's probably squishy, I don't know because I haven't opened him. But um, I'm really excited about getting these open, these Krang look, look how great the weapons look. That looks so awesome, they're um, Dimension X lasers right there. And they had such cool technology that of course Donnie kept going to you know he would fish out their technology and and to just alter it a little bit so over here krang extra dimensional enemies of earth creepy controlling and vicious the krang are extra dimensional multi-tentacle brain-like conquerors set on colonizing earth to do so They've come armed with powerful Krang droid exoskeletons that, in some modes, appear human. But turtles beware, inside rests a sickly, gross, evil too frightening to face. Weapons are super-powered Krang droid exoskeleton and laser blasters. So, evil uh, Krang evil aliens. And you know what I just thought of? I don't think they released a Bishop action figure. That would have been super cool for those of you you remember Bishop was one of the Utram, which obviously was a different version of the Krang, but still the same aliens essentially. And uh, he was pretty outstanding, but that would be awesome. So, all right, let's see who we're gonna do next. Let's do Casey Jones, Gungala, and Casey Jones is a street banging vigilante. He's got his mask right here. He's got his painted face. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see that. Look at that. He's got like a skull painted on his face and then a skull painted on his uh, mask here, his hockey mask. He's got his, uh, and I'm sorry, it's dusty. He's got his hockey pads and that looks uh, really cool. All this, all this dust. He's got his hockey stick and his bat. So that looks awesome and uh, it's cool. If it said like Eastman on there like it did in the in the show, that'd be really cool. And so this figure looks pretty awesome. Let's turn it around and wow, look, by the time he came out, these would have all been out. And this is a pretty big set already. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Actually, these came together. So I'm in twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. It would have been at least the 25th uh, figure to come out because it's the battle shell versions, which means that the it would have been four before that, so 29th, I guess. Uh, anyway, but just to kind of go over that, let's see what it says about Casey Jones. Brave and confident, Casey Jones proves he is ready for a fight. Becoming friends with April and the Turtles, he shows that although he is untrained, he is skilled and ready to rumble with the best. As Casey spends more time with the Turtles, a brotherhood forms and they become a solid team, taking on any enemies that come their way. Weapons, hockey stick, 
baseball bat, Team Ninja Turtles, and it even has a turtle shell right there. Look at that. Oh, remember what? <laughs> him and Donnie making fun of each other and like Gap Tooth. Who are you calling Gap Tooth? Cave Mouth. So, as seen in TMNT TV show season two. Man, I love this art right here. Okay, let's move on. And we have perfect. Next, we'll do April O'Neil. Hey, Red. And Loyal Turtle Ally from Above the Sewer. And so, this figure looks, you know, her face doesn't exactly look a, quite spot on to uh, the show. Because, look, this looks uh, quite a bit different. However, I think it's how it kind of like goes kind of in and more. Uh, look at her features are slightly different. But um, anyway, close enough, I guess, because I guess her cheeks seem kind of like more puffed out. Where here they're more straight down. But anyway, we got April here. She was hard to find also. And she has her um, weapons right here. We got a bow staff, it appears, some ninja stars, and then some other weapons. But I definitely do not see her fan there, her blade. And I forgot what it's called. I'm sorry, but that she would throw. And um, that was cool. And I'm surprised it doesn't have it in here. But maybe it has it in one of the later figures we have. So, oh, I guess so. This is when she was still training, I guess, before she earned her weapon. All right. So it's April O'Neil, loyal turtle ally from above the sewer. April O'Neil may not fit in at school with her peers, but when it comes to the turtles, she's all about Team Green. April is the turtle's link to the real world. Ever since she was thrown into their lives when the Krang kidnapped her genius father, clever and independent, this gal's got guts to spare and a mind for mischief. Get ready, turtles. Splinter is even teaching her the ways of the ninja. So there we are. Ninja Training Bow Staff and Team Ninja Turtles. So that puts us, we already have all of these. And um, we'll move on. Let's see who we got next. Looks like we got Baxter Stinkman. And yes, I said that on purpose because we got Baxter Stockman, evil minded mad scientist. Ooh, looks like we spilled some, something on there. Got a coffee or something. Anyway. This looks pretty cool. Um, I do have a version of him open already, but it's got a like a broken, I don't remember his broken arm or broken leg, but this looks cool. Obviously it's not as big in scale as it would have been like in the show, but still cool. There are no weapons in there outside of, of his action figure self. And this is a really cool um, action shot right there. Too bad you can't exactly do that, but uh, and you'll notice how much bigger it is in relation to his head for his body, where this one is, he's like crammed in there. Nonetheless, let's see what it says about Baxter Stockman, evil-minded mad scientist. Laughable repairman turned ruthless mad scientist. Baxter Stockman's, <laughs> Baxter Stockman's one bot bodied evil that's best to avoid. Sporting a battle suit upgraded with stolen T-Tech. This bully Brainiac's got a big Ninja Turtle sized chip on his shoulder. One he intends to fill with deadly revenge. Weapons, high tech battle suit, Krang technology, Team Foot Clan. And this one was slightly before that Casey Jones we had, where we had all these and they started adding Metalhead, adding Dog Pound, and then adding Fish Face and Snake Weed. And if you'll notice, it's got these symbols right here. Where this is Foot Clan, this is Krang. And then Snakeweed, I don't know if it was necessarily Team Krang, but he definitely was mutated. Oh, I got, okay, I, I, technically that's right. I forgot, Snake did um, uh, drive the truck for them, so. All right, I'll give him that. And Metalhead, man, do I love Metalhead. Okay, awesome. And so to go hand in hand with Baxter Stockman, and of course they kept mispronouncing his name, and that was absolutely funny. We have some mousers. These mousers look great. They look absolutely awesome. Look at that bonus seven pack. And we have two of these seven packs. And believe it or not, I remember buying this uh, purple box at Walmart because it was still left there when they were still selling the yellow boxes. But um, 
since 2013, so it had been there for a while. And, uh, yep, let's see what the back says here. It says, mutated. Well, make sure there's nothing else in there. There's seven of them. Three of them that are black, and the other ones are gray. Mousers, scrappy and fierce robotic army. Baxter Stockman is the creator of the mobile offensive underground search evac excavation and retrieval sentries called Mousers. Obviously, I know that it's an acronym. And so these highly intelligent robots are programmed by Stockman to search for items around the city and steal what is valuable. They are trained to defend themselves by using their strong jaws to chew through anything that comes their way. The turtles have their hands full with these little fiends roaming the city. That's right. These little fiends roaming the city. I almost call them friends. <laughs> Weapons. Razor Sharp Jaws. Team Baxter Stockman. I like how it says Team Baxter Stockman and then has a Foot Clan symbol here. So there's no symbol for Team Baxter Stockman. But very cool. And man, that looks awesome right there. All right. And look, by this time we also had Cockroach Terminator. Let's set these mousers aside. And let's see what we got next. Man, we've already done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've done eleven, but it's not eleven different ones, it's nine different ones so far. Okay. Well we do have Razar. And this one is absolutely dusty. And looks like it's from when I took the sticker off right here. I'm gonna have to wipe this bad boy down. Give me a second. All right, well, the glue just ended up smearing a little more, so it's gonna take longer to take off, but all right, nonetheless, and some of it was was the glue smeared, so let's take a look at Razar. Mutated Ferocious Dog Pound, because if you remember, he was Dog Pound, and he double mutated, and he has no accessories in here, but definitely looks crazy especially because um you know he's got this arm right here and this one it's actually um got it like a double hand look at that see that right there so very cool i don't know if you push that stick and then and it pull, pushes it further out but we will find out when we open this bad boy and let's see what the back says man there was a ton of them by the time this one came out, and I guess I had to have realized that because Dog Pound would have had to have come out first. So, and look at all the other figures that would have come out. We have this um, other Splinter right here where he'd be like sparring Dojo Splinter. And uh, Spider Bites. We have Slash. Mutagen Man. Anyway, let's see what it says here about Razar. Mutated ferocious dog pound, not exactly man's best friend. Razar has more bite than ever before. Coming in contact with ooze all over again, dog pound is mutated into a faster, stronger, and more powerful hound. With his fierce hatred for the turtles and his loyalty to the Foot Clan, Razar's newfound strength poses an even bigger threat to the turtles. Weapons, canine claws and teeth, mutant spikes, Team Foot Clan. So, yeah, he was. Look at this. Crazy looking. Look how this is just like razor bones. Wow, look at that. And it's crazy because he started off what? As a. Uh, um, Bradford, right? And then, of course, Dog Pound and then Razar. Very cool. All right. All right, awesome. And you know what? Do we have? Well, I said Chris Bradford, right? Do we have a dog pound? Maybe we don't in the purple ones, but I think we do. And uh, we had the the green and yellow ones. Okay. And speaking of mutagen man, pulverizer goo mobilized. Oof. Yeah, that was kind of a rough little storyline. A scene in TMNT TV show season two. Oh, we got some glue here from a sticker that was here too. And so, look how awesome this looks. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we can actually fill this hand or this arm with either water or goo, and I think the same thing for him in there. And it's better if you put water, because it'll come out, but uh, easier. 
but I believe you can actually do that. So there is Pulverizer who was, I'm like, wait, what's, what was Pulverizer's name again? Was uh, Timothy. I don't remember his last name, but I remember it was Timothy, right? And so he couldn't wait to be a Ninja Turtle and came out a couple times and then finally got his wish to be uh, mutated, but it didn't exactly go as he had planned and it was actually kind of crazy. <laughs> but I'm sure you remember that. And Mutagen Man should actually be tons bigger if he was in relation, but of course this is not to scale from the other uh, figures, but that would have been cool. To, I would have paid uh, extra f to have a um, scale size Mutagen Man, but nonetheless this one still looks great. And let's see what it says, look at that, oof. <laughs> this looks interesting, and this looks even crazier. Look at that. So it says, Mutagen Man, formerly the Pulverizer, oof, the stain over here, who mutates into a jar of goo, then Mutagen Man. <laughs> Sorry, let me read that again. Formerly the Pulverizer, who mutates into a jar of goo, then Mutagen Man. He absorbs any ooze around him for fuel being mutated from nothing but a tube of guts to an armed and leg jar with acid ooze hands. He searches for April in hopes of finding a friend and fights anything that gets in his way. His acid ooze hands melt anything they touch so the turtles fight to keep him away and ooze free in order to find a cure and reverse the mutation. And so ooze filled body, oozing hands, Team Krang, and he's not exactly Team Krang but he did get mutated by Krang, so. Um, and the uh, interesting part is, it says right here, uh, find a cure and reverse the mutation. Does that ever happen? All I gotta say is, oof. <laughs> All right, Kirby bed. <laughs> Let's move on. This one actually does look really cool. I just wish it was, again, in scale. I wish all these figures were exactly in scale, uh, to each other, at least, but. Nonetheless, still still great to have. Oh, I still have some of the, the price tag here, which you can't see, but there's little remnants. I'm like, there we go, it's coming off. Okay, one of my absolute favorite characters from this show, and new to TMNT, is Tiger Claw, dreaded assassin and bounty hunter. And Tiger Claw was absolutely an incredible character in TMNT. And um, Eric Bauza, such an incredible talent, did the voice of Tiger Claw, and most recently, the voice of Splinter in Rise of the Turtles. But um, it was incredible how he was Tiger Claw, because it was absolutely one of my favorite characters. And look at his awesome weapons here. He's got his both uh, pistols. One may even be the ice gun, I'm trying to remember. He's got the different lasers that would shoot out. But um, looks like they have holsters right here, and that's super cool to be able to hold them there. He's got his eye patch, and then his chopped off tail. Who, if you remember, Alapex, right? That would have been a cool action figure, too. But nonetheless, this Tiger Claw is great. And let's take a look at what it says back here. Look at this awesome artwork. Hand cannons. That's what they decided to call them, I guess. And look, there's more figures back here. Okay, so. Tiger Claw, dreaded assassin and bounty hunter, part man, part tiger. Tiger Claw is the most feared assassin in all of Asia. Hired by Shredder to assist the Foot Clan in capturing Splinter, Tiger Claw proves to be even more than the turtles can handle. With extreme martial arts and weapons to back him up, does he have the skills to challenge and take down Master Splinter? Weapons hand cannons and Team Foot Clan Wow, and I love how it has the um, other characters coming over here, released around this time. These are from the, the roleplay um, uh, turtles from when they played wizards and warlocks. What did they call it on the show? Now I gotta remember. I'm like, hmm. Okay, it was uh, mazes and mutants, and so this is the LARP uh, version of of the turtles because it was live action role play which we'll get to in a minute but um oh it says it right here <laughs> didn't even read it but um this tiger claw 
absolutely incredible. So glad to have them in our set. Speaking of the live action role play, here it is right here. Raph the Barbarian. And so he's got his axe right here. He's got his helmet right here. And I love how they made all their stuff out of like homemade items. Well, not homemade, but items they found around the house. And for Raph, I'm trying to remember what they made his stuff out of, but you know, it was like out of trash and discarded items. And it was so cool. It was actually pretty, um, pretty clever how they came up with it. But um, he looks awesome here. Look at that. So, and let's take a look. Man, this appears to be a picture of the actual action figure instead of art from the show. Look at that. This is art from the show in the back with the action figure picture in the front. And that's really cool. This is from 2014 release, so very cool. And here it says, Raph the Barbarian, live action role play. Carrying a big axe and wearing a horned helmet and fur tunic, which is nothing more than a spaghetti strainer and a shaggy rug, Raph transforms himself into Raph the Dwarf Barbarian. After getting sucked into an evil wizard's maze, Raph finds himself fighting by his brother's sides to finish the quest and free April. Weapons, big barbarian axe and ninja team ninja turtles. Very, very cool. Look at that. So, um, hmm. Oh, yeah, it was a strainer. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Ooh, Squirrelinoid. Okay, so next we have the LARP version of Leo, which is Leo the Knight. And look how cool that looks. Does he have a shield? Yes, he does, which was like the lid of a trash can of a, you know, the aluminum type ones there outside or tin or whatever. But there's a sword. And there's this really cool helmet. And man, he looks awesome. And what I like about these two is their faces actually look a lot more like the actual turtles from the show than the original ones released. So let's see what it says back here. This is actually a really great looking action figure. All right, and check that out. This is also um, the action figure. And this is a great pose. It's awesome how these actually look great in their poses. Awesome. So it says, Leo the Knight. Oh, why did I say that so weird? Leo the Knight. Live action role play. The LARP version of Leo. Leo creates the perfect costume and becomes the ferocious Leo the Knight. With his fierce medieval sword, garbage can lid shield, metal breastplate, and pizza sauce can helmet, he is ready to take on his LARP adventure. Little did he know his little game would send the turtles on a challenging mission to save April. Weapons are Medieval Sword, Shield, and Team Ninja Turtles. Very, very cool. All right. Let's see. Let's move on. And who do we have next? We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we still have seven left. Let's take a look at this really cool Raphael and Michelangelo Ninjas in Training. Two figures included. And this is from... The episode where it showed them as young little guys. And that looks awesome. Look at his little practice eye. And look at his practice nunchuck. So that looks awesome. And man, look how little they made them look here and young. But um, so cool. They actually look younger here than they do here. But... Ninjas in Training, Raphael and Michelangelo. Mutated by mutagen ooze as baby turtles, these brothers transform and are no longer your average turtles. With great training every day from their sensei splinter, these young ninjas in training build their skills in ninjutsu and become a lean green fighting team that will soon be known as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Weapons, size, and nunchucks. Very cool. Man, we still need this one right here. I know for a fact we don't have ninjas in training, Leonardo and Donatello. We might actually have this twice, thinking I had the other one, I guess. But All right, cool. Set that aside. And now we have the Rat King. And look at this right here. Exclusive video game feature, unlock code inside. Interesting. 
and Rat King. And you know what? I'm gonna have to bring this back here so we can see his face because of the shadow. But ugh, look at his skin and his teeth. Crazy. Hey, look at the rats on him. And so he's kind of like a mummy with all these bandages all over him. And look, uh, what was the name of the rat? Was it Aristotle? Like, I think it was Aristotle. And then there's his walking stick. So he's got, you know, a couple of good uh, um, accessories with him. His arms don't look like they do much. They don't bend at the elbow. They just move only at the waist. And maybe his wrist turn, but that's about it. And then because he's posed like this, I think his legs probably don't bend too much. So his waist doesn't turn, his legs don't turn. So he's kind of just kind of stuck in that position. And look, we actually got him on sale. This looks like it might have been Big Lots. And then on sale half price for $5, which isn't too much of a steal. Because when they were new, they were probably $8.94. Like this one right here at Walmart. So probably 9 bucks anyway. So um, 8 bucks. But still on sale. I'm excited about that. And ooh, we got a big crease across his face. Look how spooky his face looks. Wow. Look how cool that is. And he was actually kind of a creepy uh, villain. So, the Rat King, telepathic commander of the Rat Army, cold blooded and deceitful, formerly known as Dr. Falco. The Rat King is determined to rid the city of humanity and claim it for his rat brothers. He is able to see through the eyes of rats and control them with his telepathic powers, destined to take down the turtles. The city should be weary of the one called the Rat King. Weapons, army of rats and telepathic powers. Team Rats and Crane. And not exactly, but more or less. And look how this one was an early release because there was only this many out. 16, 17 figures. Very cool. Okay, who do we have next? We have Slash. Look, friendly pet turned evil foe. And well, that's only half the story because this came out in 2014. So Slash wasn't always evil foe either because you know, he later on became an ally as the Mutanimals. And that was awesome. So I'm excited to see the slash. And I do have another version where he's got um like neon green uh, toe talons like this. So anyway, let's take a look at this really cool slash. He's got his big mace club right there. Boosh! Knock you out with, and he was a big fierce one. And um, the voice of Slash was the one who. Uh, I'm trying to remember it was Corey, right? Corey Feldman who did the voice of which turtle? I'm trying to remember. Was it Donatello? In um in the first movie of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But Slash, friendly pet turned evil foe. Once Raph's loyal pet turtle Spike, he mutated into a larger, craggier turtle named Slash. He has a spike shell and sharp beak. His strength and ninja abilities are faster and tougher than the Ninja Turtles. With intentions not as admirable, Slash tries to convince Raphael to leave his brothers behind. When he refuses, Slash becomes a foe rather than friend. Weapons, spiked mace, knife, and bladed hand guards. And Team Krang, and again, he's not exactly Team Krang, he just got mutated, but um, very cool. All right. Man, there was a lot of figures out by then. Okay, who else we got? We have Rocksteady and Rock-Headed Rhino. And again, oh, still some of the remnants of the sticker. Let me try to get it off here. There we go. Some of the glue that was left behind. And there he goes. There's a little hammer and the sickle here. And we can actually paint those to be gold colored if we need to. And that would be awesome too. And again, it's too bad Rocksteady is not in scale to the turtles. And neither is Slash, because they would be huge. Slash would be huge. Rocksteady would be huge. And I would absolutely pay extra premium fee to have them be the size that they would need to be. Look at that, gold. Um, 
in relation to the turtles. And this kind of uh, mutated, melted onto his like hand right there. So we can definitely customize that on a later date. But let's move on. It says, Rocksteady, rock-headed rhino, mutated by Shredder from Steranko to Rocksteady. He, wears, he swears allegiance to Shredder and agrees to team up with his partner in crime, Bebop, to form the dynamic duo of Bebop and Rocksteady. Our heroes need to use extreme caution when dealing with this mutated rock-headed rhino. He is the brains and brawn of the Bebop Rocksteady partnership and could deliver quite the feast to Shredder where the main course is turtle soup. Weapons, hammer, sickle, and foot clan, uh, team foot clan. And he looks really cool. And he always wanted to crush everyone like blueberry. <laughs> and there's his his bad glass eye or whatever. And there's his good eye. But anyway, very cool. We have just three left. Well, technically two, and you're about to find out why. So Donatello. This one is Stealth Tech Donnie. It looks pretty neat. I love how he's more angular to look more like the show than the original release of the Turtles. This one again got at Walmart. That's about how much they were for sale at Walmart when they were new. And this one came out in 2013. Very awesome. And look how he's got this little uh, gizmo right here. This uh, I'm assuming would be an offshoot of a Krang Tech, but it doesn't look like the Krang Tech. Looks like he just made this on his own. And then he's got his uh, tech weapons right here with his bow, black bow staff and then something uh, attached to his weapon right here. We'd have to see it up close, but um, still tech bow staff. There you go. Again, a picture of an action pose right here with a, with a background there. And then he's got his still tech visor right there. So Donnie's uh, still tech Donatello. Donnie's inventive mind and creativity are at it again and now he's created a whole new stealthy look for the fearless foursome stealth tech donatello is equipped with bring it ninja gear stealth tech bow staff robot flip up visor with these incredible battle creations bow staff master donnie and the turtles are ready to take down their enemies yep stealth tech bow staff and team ninja turtles and look how there was stealth tech for all four of them and I'm pretty sure we still need these three. So now that we're coming across ones we don't have, I know we don't have these three. So we definitely need to keep that on the list. And then we don't have these two, I'm pretty sure. I think everybody else on here we may have. We'll find out as we go along. Very cool. Okay, and as I mentioned before, we do have two left, but dun -dun -dun -dun, they are both neutralizer. So let's take a closer look at our neutralizer. Again, this is one that I actually paid a penny, a pretty penny for. It may have been $40. I don't know because it was so rare to find them on Amazon was uh, not cheap. So, and then of course in the purple box still. So it's original type packaging. He's got this cool weapons right here. And um, yeah, looks awesome. Amphibious Assassin of Dimension X neutralizer and he would have been tall too it's unfortunate that sorry i don't mean to sound like a broken record and complaining but i would pay extra for a, a premium price for them to be the size relation to the turtles because he was pretty massive and look at his tail very cool all right it says neutralizer amphibious assassin of dimension x armed to the teeth with weapons neutralizer is one big bad mutant being held in a detention center by the Krang, this big mutant, Newt, became the Krang's number one enemy. As a bounty hunter, he tracks them down and takes them down, collecting their tentacles as he goes. With unbelievable strength and a deep hatred for the Krang, oops, sorry, he proves to be more of an ally to the turtles than a mutant to fear. Wow. I was like, did I read that wrong? Sounded a little odd. He proves to be more of an ally to the turtles than a mutant to fear. Not instead of that? Hmm, interesting. Weapons, knife, bladed tail, explosives, team ninja turtles. That looks cool. And what uh, 
Neutralizer was a salamandrian, we found out later, right? Just like uh, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa was, of course, uh, Raph's crush. <laughs> but uh, we found out that he's more of a rogue agent, right? So, very cool. And that is going to do it for our purple package turtle figs. Let me fix this and get us level again. So a little too crazy. So, what do you say we move on to our next uh, action figures in this set? Okay. Actually, give me a moment, guys. Why don't I set them back out here? We will move on. Now we'll bring them out here. And actually, I do have one more purple box action figure. And this is a deluxe set because it has a vehicle with it. And I would like to do the vehicles next, I guess, because this one is one that we're doing. And so let's move on to this incredible dragon chopper. And with this incredible foot soldier right here, Dragon Fang Foot Soldier. Doesn't this look absolutely amazing? So let me um, let me get them all set up so that we can check this out. Okay, give me a second. 